Hey there, my name is Alex, I am the Silvermont, and this is a video guide for the Shadow of Mark Alliance Raid series. It'll cover all major encounters in the Void Arc, Weeping City of Mark, and Dune Sky. This video operates under the assumption that you are using decent gear, such as the Shire gear in this case, that is easily obtained, and that the average eye level in your group will be very high on account of this. So this is a digest type guide, only covering important mechanics and things you need to know going in. Basically, how to avoid wipes. That out of the way, let's get started. Free Dark starts off with a very simple fight. DPS the giant blob and kill adds when they spawn, whilst avoiding the blob's giant body slam attack. Eventually some players will get trapped in a wall, and you simply need to kill the adds outside of the wall before they kill everyone trapped inside. That's all you need to know. Whilst more complicated than the first fight, this one still isn't too bad. One tank will take Sawtooth, the other will take Erminsul. Kill adds ASAP, and if you see the ground moving beneath you, or the adds, move away from it and make sure adds are killed or moved and not consumed by the ground. If you see anyone tethered together by what appears to be snot, you can free them by simply moving your character through the tether, disgusting as that may sound. When you see Sawtooth casting Shockwave Stomp, you just need to hide behind Erminsoul to survive the attack. Cuckoo Lane or Kuhalen, however you want to say his name, he's not hard to deal with. Stay behind him during the fight and kill the adds that he spawns. From the start of the fight, don't stand on the raised platforms as he'll throw out AoEs at certain players and he can throw them on the platform. However, when he turns the floor into goop, you then go stand on the platforms to avoid the goop damage. Aside from that, just kill adds and focus him down with DPS. Very simple fight with nothing too noteworthy. At low health, she'll split into several fragments, and you'll just have one tank take each. She has a gaze attack, so make sure to turn away from her when you see the eye above her. Aside from that, just kill the adds and remember to stack up on the person she targets with her shared damage ability to help spread the damage. And with that, you're ready to move on to the Wiping City. Avoid AoE until she draws everyone up into her web. After this you'll find an add up there that you can kill. Doing so opens a hole in the web which people can use to return to the ground, and then destroy several key knots. This will get rid of her web. Aside from that, look out for stack markers and the like, and you'll soon be on to the next boss. This encounter has some important mechanics to make note of, as it's easy to die if you don't know what's going on. When the boss casts Megadeth, you must stand in the large green pools on the floor to become a zombie. When you're a zombie, death won't kill you, because you're already dead. Adds you know how to deal with by now. There'll also be some areas where one person needs to stand in each circle, but zombie and death is the most important mechanic to make note of. Finally, the red arrows he casts on several players, Everyone with a red arrow needs to group up with each other, so if you get the red arrow, run to other people with the arrow. The Death Marble, largely responsible for the Wiping City nickname. Ozma can be intimidating if you don't know what's happening, but that's why you're watching this, isn't it? Fortunately, the fight is pretty simple once you understand it. Sphere Ozma will mark players and then drop comets on them. If you are marked, move out onto the circle part of the arena, away from the group, who will be fighting on the square part. When Ozma sucks everyone inside, you just need to stand on the circle platform and kill your ad, then move down to kill the Ozma Shade. Don't look at him when he casts Assimilation, but otherwise just DPS him down ASAP. When you return to the main arena, you'll then have his triangle or pyramid shape to contend with. When he turns into a triangle, move onto the circular part of the arena, as he'll blast the square part. When he turns into a square, or cube, move as close to him as you can to avoid taking damage. Make sure you aren't standing too close to the tank however, as they'll be targeted by an AoE. Typically, the best way here is for everyone to stand on the square platform whilst the tanks move to the circular part. But as long as you remember to put meteors away from the group in sphere form, move off the square platform in triangle form, and stand close to Ozma during square form, 
you should be fine. The final boss of Weeping City isn't bad at all compared to Ozma. I dare say you could beat the fight whilst talking with your internet provider on the phone and barely paying attention. Keep an eye on the boss's hair, stand on the opposite side. Sometimes the tank will be the one turning the boss away from the group, but you shouldn't rely on that. If you see blades on her hair, move to the other side so you aren't hit by it. Kill adds, avoid AoE as usual. When she spawns the green blobs, stand by the one that resembles a guillotine or a blade or an axe to avoid its attack. The other ones are not safe to stand by. If the boss uses penetration, she will knock you away if you're not looking at her. If you are looking at her, she'll draw you in. You can use this to launch yourself into a safe position. She's one of the relatively rare bosses that you want to tank in the center of the arena. There's a good chance you looked up this video because of this fight. Well, here's everything to look out for. The boss will cast Doom on two players in your group. Healers can cleanse this to save the afflicted persons. However, when the boss casts Void, you just need to run away from the red attack in the center of the arena. You sprint if you have to. If the boss uses Void Arrow on you, it will drop a tornado where you are standing. So put this away from the group in a corner or somewhere like that. When he casts Void Arrow in the middle of the room, just use some knockback resistance ability or stand by the shield, the wall at the entrance of the arena. Next up, when you see the boss drop large chunks of ice, move away from them to the opposite side, but stay in front of them, as he'll follow it up with a strong knockback ability. You want to be knocked back into the ice to stop you falling off the ship. Simple enough. As for his death ability, just make sure you aren't standing on the giant white segments of the arena that gradually appear. This fight is more annoying than hard because of how the mechanics work. When Wormhole is used, the Atomos in the arena will have orbs tethered to them. After the orb hits the tethered one, that Atomos will vanish, and the orb will be transferred to another Atomos of the matching colour. So, if a blue Atomos is tethered, the orb will hit the tethered one and then explode on the other blue Atomos. The golden orb's safe zone is by the Atomos that is eating it. Blue orbs, you just want to be away from them. So let's say there are two golden Atomos and a blue orb. The first Atomos will vanish after the orb reaches it. Then the second Atomos will explode everything close to it. In a nutshell, if you see a golden orb, move to the Atomos that isn't tethered, but matches the color of the tethered one. If you see a blue orb, stay away from the Atomos. When the boss casts Debilitator, he will spawn pools around the arena, give you a weakness to fire or water. If you're weak to fire, change all the pools to blue by standing in them. If you're weak to water, change all of the pools to red. Aside from that, killing adds and avoiding AoE, doing stack markers as usual. The ultimate weapon is a bit of a pushover this time. Around half health, you'll spawn a large stack marker in the center. Stand in that, then run to the edges after it detonates, but obviously not standing in the yellow-black perimeter. After you kill the two adds, who will spawn some Aether Collectors. Killing these will rapidly fill your Limit Break gauge, so feel free to use a Limit Break, melee or ranged, as soon as it fills up, and then it will rapidly fill up again from the remaining Collectors. Alternatively, save it for Proto Ultima, because when he comes back, you need to kill him before he uses Supernova. Either way, it's a simple and quick fight. Skahawk has a few things to be on the lookout for. When she grows wings and casts Shade Spin, the safe spot is either directly in front or behind of her wings. Keep in mind, the wings can be at a slightly different angle to her body. When she rapidly jumps or changes a location, make sure you move away from where she's landing, as there'll be a large AoE where she lands. When the ground flashes red and the game tells you shadows gather on the floor, do not move. When she spawns adds, make sure they do not reach her. Kill them ASAP, as if they reach her, she will become intolerable. There's a very high chance that she'll spawn one at around 3, 4, 5% health. It might be tempting to ignore it and kill her, but it's probably best to kill it anyway. I've seen a few groups wipe at like 0.1% because of that. 
When shadow limbs tether to players, the tether player must look at the limb to freeze it in place. Aside from that, just kill adds and repeat. The true final boss, and if you've watched Dragon Ball Z, you know how to beat him. Probably. Watch out for gaze attacks coming from the boss, and kill the gates that spawn immediately. When he spawns the life gate, keep attacking it to win the beam struggle. After this, he'll start using some of Skahawk's abilities too, so be on the lookout for things like Shade Thrust. When three players are marked by large purple circles, they will then have orbs dropped on their position continuously for approximately 5 seconds. Run around the perimeter of the arena, away from the group, and the orbs will follow you. The boss will also cast a stacking marker combined with gaze, so stack on the marked player, but turn away from them. When the boss spawns more gates, one player, usually a tank, will enter the large one in the middle. There will be various other mechanics, such as comet circles, but you know how to deal with those by now. One player in each circle. And that about does it for Diablos and the Shadow of Mark. Next time, the inexplicably dreaded Return to Ivalice. Thank you so much for watching, I hope this guide was useful, and until next time, take care.